Hello, I am back for part two of the Aleph uh, 3 build. As you can see, I have a different heatsink. This is a heatsink that I purchased off of Amazon. It's a high density fin pattern, and I am still intending on building the heatsink inside of the chassis and having a, a kind of a ducted tunnel. Um, this heatsink is uh, I'm going, to, I'm going to be too small or not capable enough. I'll talk about the heat sink uh, a little later on. First thing I want to show is I did change the 0.47 uh, ohm resistors that form the current source to 0.33 as specified in the schematic. Uh, as a refresher, what we're going to see here is a voltage across this resistor, which is basically uh, the forward voltage, you know, this voltage drop here across the base to emitter plus across this resistor. And for easy math, if we saw a 0.33 volt differential across this resistor, we would have one amp flowing here and you'd have one amp flowing here. It just so happens that we are seeing very close to 0.33 uh, volts, so it's uh, easy math. Let me show that. Here is the voltage drop across that resistor. You might be able to see it on that meter and it's approximately 0.32 volts. I will reposition the camera so we can see the power supply and our uh, maximum output voltage and see if that has uh, improved. Here's a close up of our power supply. Uh, we can see that we are drawing now about 2.1 amps on our positive supply and 2.1 amps on our negative supply. Previously with the 0.47 ohm resistor we were about 1.6 amps, 50 watts, 50 watts. So uh, one channel driven or connected is going to be 100 watts. We will be roughly 200 watts for the total power supply. Let's increase our voltage and see where our clipping point is now. About right there. My input voltage is 1.6 volts. This is our RMS input and our peak voltage now is 23.4 volts and our uh, RMS output is around 17 volts which uh, oh, a little bit of a disagreement actually this is like 16.5 we're reading about 16 volts here um, we were with the 0.477 ohm resistor uh, I think our peak was about 16 volts and so now we're 24 volts so uh, we'll be able to get out substantially more power uh, out of this uh, amplifier with that uh, change on the resistors. Next part of this project is to figure out the heat sinks, the chassis, uh, cooling, things like that. Um, I purchased these heat sinks off of Amazon. They have a fairly high uh, fin density and they were about 20 bucks, uh, not too bad. That's what I've done some of my initial testing. Let me show uh, a sheet right here. 20 bucks. However, I don't think these are going to work. Um, one of the issues, the, or one of the you know goals of this project is to do a ducted fan cooling so I don't have any exposed heat sink. Uh, I've taken a small fan. This is a very quiet fan and uh, it's an 80 millimeter fan and uh, I've placed the fan here and I don't feel a whole lot of air uh, making it through this tunnel. Um, I'll, try to, I'll try these heat sinks and then I'll try these heat sinks over here. Um, so what I did is I found some other heat sinks. Again, these are these are much larger. These heat sinks I purchased from DigiKey and were 
$28 right here by my thumb. And these obviously are going to be too long. So I'll cut a few inches off of the uh, length with my chop saw. And when I have this fan placed uh, near the heat sink, I feel almost the full force of the fan on the other side. Uh, so I, I think this might be the better solution for us. But we'll, we'll test it each way. My next decision was for a power supply and I'm gonna sneak in this uh, AC to DC switching power supply. My initial goal was to do a linear power supply using a toroidal transformer, big capacitors, you know, a full, uh, you know, full diode bridge. That's going to be really expensive. And so my first test is, uh, or first first implementation is going to be using a two AC to DC power supplies. I need two of these because I need to form a plus and a minus voltage rail. I am going to use a power supply made by XP Power. Probably won't be able to read it down here. It's a model LCS 150 US 24. That means it's a 150 watts at 24 volts output. That's 6.5 amps output. I'll stack them inside the system you know, something like this so I can get some airflow between them. And uh, I pretty much exclusively use XP power. Power supplies uh, have used them for multiple personal projects and uh, a lot of projects at my day job. And they have always been extremely reliable and have always met their uh, compliance uh, specifications. I purchased the XP power LCS 150 US 24 from DigiKey and in singles they are about $24. Next part of the design is figuring out the chassis. Uh, this is, uh, I'm showing uh, the pieces of a chassis I purchased from eBay by a Chinese manufacturer, D-O-U-K, Duke or Dauk Audio. This is what the listing looked like. It was $115 that included shipping. I don't have time to build a chassis, so uh, I'm just going to use this off the shelf one. And we can see that it's roughly 220 millimeters wide, 311 millimeters deep. However, I don't think I'm going to be able to squeeze everything in. It is really close, but I don't think it's going to happen. So I think I'm going to put this chassis back on eBay, uh, hopefully just take a small loss on it. And I have ordered another or a different chassis made by the same company that is uh, 300 millimeters, uh, 320 millimeters wide and about the same depth and not quite as tall. And you can see this is about $160 with shipping. So the chassis is going to be the most expensive part of this project. But I think it will fit. My next step is going to be moving the amplifier board over to this chassis. Uh, so I'll have to drill and tap some holes here. I will cut this to uh, length and I will do some thermal tests. Uh, while I'm waiting for the next chassis to arrive, I will uh, do some uh, design to uh, make a shroud or a duct for the fan to fit uh, onto the heat sink. Anyways, I think that's uh, my stopping point for this part of the video. Thanks. Bye.